It's cold outside, but it's heating up here in the Maxstone Athletic Center as tonight the Yeshiva University Maccabees play host to the Immaculata Mighty Max in a game where the Max are just looking to get back on track. Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Bentheim. Alongside me, as always, Akiva Urbaum. And the Max are coming off what's probably their most disappointing loss of the season. Yeah, Charlie, you could say that again. I mean, in terms of shooting, the Max went totally cold. Oren Batesh and Zevi Samet, who are usually relied to, upon to hit the big shots, just couldn't find their rhythm, they could not find their groove, and they went a combined one for 13 from beyond the arc. In addition to that, the Max also had their lowest assist count in the Elliott Simons motion offense era. That's not what the Max want to see if they want to look to improve in their record going into the season, and the Max definitely have to step up their game if they want to win tonight against Immaculata. Well, Immaculata themselves have not been playing well, and it's a game where they need it as well. Yeah, Immaculata is in desperate need of some momentum right now. They are just two and six on the season, and they have lost five of the last five games. They're on a cold streak right now. They really need this win tonight against Yeshiva University, and they have some guys who can put the ball in the hoop. They have Tim Schulsteis, who is definitely a leader and a person who is able to score in a variety of different ways, but they really have to just get it together and start getting more, much more into their rhythm and into their groove this game. Well, it should be a very interesting game, and it's the Max versus the Mighty Max, so it's gonna be fun. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Coming up after the quick break, we have anthems, we have lineups, we have tip-off, we have basketball here from the Max Stern Athletic Center. When I was in ninth grade, someone told me to give up on ball. He told me, basketball will only take you so far in life. You're not going to make it to the NBA, he said. What he was missing is that making it to the NBA isn't the only reason why we play. basketball leaves you with so much more than just the game itself. The life lessons and friendships that are made while playing the game will outlive the game and can last a lifetime. Hello and welcome back into the Maxstone Athletic Center. 
for this Wednesday night edition of Yeshiva University Maccabees basketball. We are just about ready for anthems as the clock winds down. Both teams finishing their warm-ups with a slam dunk. As is customary. As is customary, exactly. And we are going to send it down now to the PA announcer. The starting lineups are sponsored by the Yeshiva University Office of Admissions. As you start your college journey, make sure you visit us online to check out all the great virtual events and opportunities we have for YU students and how you too can be a Maccabee. We're going to start with the visiting Immaculata University Mighty Max. Their point guard, number five, John Flood. Their guards, Jalen Flowers, number 14, and Tim Schulsteis, number 30. Jalen Flowers, number 14, will play the four and Tyler Tillery, the big man. They're coached by Jason Hyman. Steven Dow as well, gonna be on the court in the starting five. And Akiva, who do we have to look out for tonight? Yeah, the last guy that you mentioned there, number 20, Steven Dow, who is a junior, 6'2 guard. He is a really, really efficient scorer on this team. He also leads the team in rebounds. And despite being 6'2", he's a guy who hustles for all of the rebounds and the loose balls. He plays a very physical brand of basketball, and he has the ability to bully the smaller guards in size. So you're going to want to look out for him. Steven averaging 9 points and 6.4 rebounds with a pretty efficient 63.6% field goal this season. Dow, good, efficient player. 
And now for the Yeshiva University Maccabees, starting at forward is Roy Ikovich, the guard, number 21, Zevi Samet. Matan Zucker will play the five role. Max Zakheim, the new point guard, coming back from injury. And Dotan Bardichev closing out the starting five. He usually plays a four-like position. Again, this is a max offense which runs. Not a lot of on-ball shenanigans, a lot of off-ball screens, and passers looking for the screener. But who is it going to be specifically for the Max tonight? Well, just going back to that last game, number 23, Max Zakhein, who played at Bryant University last year, he had that D1 experience, had the best game of his Max career versus St. Joseph of Long Island with 23 points. His explosiveness and his quickness will take this offense to another level, and his ability to really get to the basket at will is pretty extraordinary. Let's look out for that tonight. So 20 minutes on the clock here for the first half. Fans are ready, players are ready, refs are ready, we're sure ready. As it's going to be Dow versus Itkovic on the tip. And we are underway as it's going to start with the Mighty Max and John Flood. Sam it on him. Scholz dice. Ball stripped away and here comes the Max on the break. Sam it slows it down. Gives it off to Zakheim in the corner. Now it's Zucker. Gets it to Samet. Around the screen, nice pass inside to Zucker who finishes the layup. A perfect decision there by Zevi Samet. He attracted the guard. He pump faked, he was about to take the shot and he decided to dish it into Zucker for the wide open two. Jalen Flowers inside to Tillery, getting his first touches of the game. Tries to body Zucker inside, floater. A little short, Scholz-Dice grabs it, and the Mighty Max will reset. Dow in the post, they're coming at Zucker. He's not giving up any ground. Shot no good, gets his own rebound. No good again, who wants it more? Now it's Bardichev who claims the rebound. Mighty Max start 0 for 3. Not the most impressive defensive possession for Matan Zucker. Dow had his fair share of opportunities but was not able to convert. Ikovic pulls up from mid-range and rattles that one home. Schultz dice. Flowers now. Flood. Dow jockeying for position inside. He's looking to take it on Roy. Flowers pops a triple. Back iron, and that ball will travel out of bounds. So it'll be Max Ball up 4-0. They've started the game relatively impressive defensively. Yeah, Max playing some good defense, but on the other side, Immaculata are getting some pretty open looks. They're just not hitting him right now, so I don't know if the Max can continue to depend on that every single time that Immaculata has the ball. Sam it. This time he'll try the three. Ooh, missed it by a lot. You don't usually see that at a Zemi Samet, but it's early in the game. Schultz this now. Poked away by Bardichev. And here comes Zucker. He's got to watch out behind him. Picks up his dribble. Got away with a walk. Samet's going to try again. This one looks straight on. But that time he leaves it short. Head down, drive. Bunny goes. A lot of power there by Timmy Schulteis going into the lane, putting down his shoulder, and just willing it into the basket. The Mighty Max now in a press, and the YU Max give the ball away. That's the first turnover of the game by either team as Max Zakheim threw the ball to no one in particular. Checking in for Maculata is John Proctor, the 6'5 sophomore guard out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. It's an interesting substitution there. We just saw Tim Schulteis with that bucket, but they sub him out very quickly. They might want to maintain his energy for the later parts of this game. Bardichev again on the steal. Zucker. 
Dow on him. Roy. Salmon inside on the cut. Layup just falls in. So it didn't work from outside the arc, so Samet decides to make it a little bit easier on himself. That's what you need sometimes. If you get it going inside, sometimes it'll help you gain that confidence to pull it out and extend the floor, and maybe Samet will start to get hot from the outside as well. And Tillery and Bardichev are really going at it, and Bardichev is having his way right now on the defensive end. As he pokes away again, and the Max run the offense. Here comes Zucker. Cross-court Zakheim. Behind the back, Spice. Gets himself inside, teardrop off both rims and falls out. Flood with the rebound and he's pushing. Pulls it back out. It's a corner three for Flowers. Good closeout by Zakheim. Who wants the rebound? Possessed by Ikovic. Pardichev. Roy. Bardichev now pulls a three short. The Max 0 for 3 from downtown to start the game. That's two long strides. No good on the layup. And Zakheim to push. Reach in by Flood. So sloppy basketball to start this game. Yeah, we're seeing a couple of turnovers, especially on the hands of Immaculata. They haven't really gotten the ball into the post very efficiently. YU has had some good active hands and they've continued to be able to poke it out. Both teams have to protect the ball a little bit better in order to start to gain a bit of a lead. So Coach Diamond saw what we saw, calls his first timeout, a 30 second timeout. And with Max Zakheim coming up, it's sort of freed and opened things up a little bit for Zevi Samet, but unfortunately he hasn't been shooting the ball as well as he did to start the season. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Max Zakheim might have some of the attention diverted away from Zevi Samet as Zakheim is also a huge scoring threat in his own right but for some reason Zevi Samet without the ball in his hands as often has not been able to hit it but knowing Zevi I think he's going to bounce back he's going to be able to hit one shot and then continue going from there he's a bit of a streaky shooter sometimes so once one falls a lot more might come and follow Max stay with their starting five As that ball is almost turned over, Zachheim does an impressive job of keeping possession and he'll run the offense for the Maccabees. Samet. Off to Zachheim. Drives left. Kicks out Bardichev. Open triple. Can't get that one to fall. Great job by Zakheim to dribble and penetrate and kick it out to the corner three, it was open, it just did not fall. Proctor loses it. That's the fourth turnover for the mighty Max as Roy's gonna smartly slow that down, almost took a body with him. Samet surveys but decides to take it back out. Now it's Zucker. Cross court Roy. Samet with 10, he'll try a triple. No good, he's 0 for 3 from downtown. He's getting closer and closer, that one rimming out. It's Farmar getting his first touches of the game. Ooh, nice pass inside to Flood. But Roy says no. Zevi. Bardichev. Zucker wants it in the post, he's got the smaller Flood on him. He'll kick it out to an open Samet, he's gotta have this one. Nope. And Zucker had Flood defending him in the post. It might have been a good idea for him to use his body and back him down, but he decided to kick it out to Sam. Also a good decision, but it did not pan out for the Max. Farmer, the mighty Max struggling to get anything going on offense. Farmer now on a perimeter jumper. Gets that one to fall in. Nice shot there by Farmar. He is averaging 6.6 .6 points on the season. Let's see if they can look to get him going. Zucker. Salmon inside. No good on the leg. He's really struggling to start this game. But he's going to keep on shooting, and he'll eventually shoot out of it. And if you're the Mighty Max, you 
you're happy with the way things have gone thus far, but if you're going to give Zevi Samet too many open looks, it's not going to end well for you. Another turnover. That's six for the Mighty Max. And Oren Batesh going to check into the game, as well as Artie Markovic, Roy Itkovic, and Zevi Samet both take seats. Brandon Perez subs in for the Mighty Max. Schulteis back in the game as well. So both teams make changes. Not a lot of points on the board. Seven and a half minutes gone in the first half. Zucker, he's getting dripled. Markovic, Bardichev. Gets to his spot, kick out Batesh. Nice extra pass to Markovic, could he finish it off? No good again. This time Zucker fights for the rebound, misses one, goes up a second time, gets fouled, layup doesn't go, he'll get two chances from the free throw line. We all know about the fighting spirit of Matan Zucker never giving up on the play, two offensive boards on that possession, and he earned these two shots at the line. Max starting the game 0 for 7 from downtown. Sort of picking up where they left off Saturday night. Zucker hits the first. And number 23, Des Murphy going to sub into the game. Jalen Flowers going to take a seat. Second shot, same result. Max up 8-4. to four. The Mighty Max have turned over the ball six times. Farmer off one. Nice pass inside to Dow. Thought he got fouled. He did as well. Shot goes in nonetheless. Yeah, Dotan Bardichev almost certainly got his arm on Dow there. Very surprised with the no call. Maculata staying in their press. Max beat it easily. Zakheim catches. Back out, Batesh. Bardichev puts the ball on the deck. Max Zakheim with six on the shot clock. Bardichev with four on the shot clock. Someone's going to have to put it up. That's an open shot for Batesh. And they'll hit that nine out of ten times. That's exactly who you want at the top of the key with the ball in their hands at the end of the shot clock to hit that big shot. Oren Batesh, he's done it all season and he does it again here. Now it's Perez. Murphy off the farmer. Pumps. Takes it in. Kick out Perez. Travels with it. Never mind. He, yep. Traveled. I thought he stepped out of bounds for a second. Eventual call was travel. And it's interesting to note that Stephen Dow, every single time that there's a whistle or a lull in the play, he's putting his hands on his head, which usually signifies that someone is tired. Now, it's very early in this game, but maybe this Immaculata team not fully up to par in terms of their health and, and athleticism at this point in the season. Yeah, fatigue really might be setting in. Right now, Immaculata has seven turnovers already in the early parts of this first half. Roy does his best Lou Amundsen impression as the layup doesn't catch anything. And here comes Flood. Farmer inside, draws contact, layup no good, two shots coming. 6'5", senior forward out of Penwood. Yeah, for all that has not gone Immaculata's way tonight, there is a beacon of hope in Farmar. He's played really, really well. He's been aggressive down there in that low post. He's going to look to make two. First shot, no good. Now... The Immaculata team name, the Max, comes from the Mac part of Immaculata. It is not another Maccabees. Something to note. And we're going to get more into why they're named the Mighty Max later. But just for re reference, it is not the Maccabees versus the Max. It's the Max versus the Mighty Max. Ooh, wow. Dow gave his best effort on the block, but Roy sneaks the ball into the hoop.
Farmer spins, kick out. That's an open three straight on. That ball falls. So Des Murphy on the board. And our first three of the game finally. Took half of the first half. That's a kick ball. The Mighty Max are going to call a timeout. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. 13 to 9 to start this one. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Max fans. This is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leckett Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! It's been a relatively slow start to the half. Immaculata turning the ball over a bunch. The Maccabees unable to convert on those turnovers. So we sit here at 13 to nine, around 10 and a half minutes in. Yeah, both teams not playing with a ton of purpose right now. And it might be due to the fact that the gym environment right now is pretty deflated. We've seen this arena buzzing before, but really few fans in the stands tonight. It's pretty cold outside. Maybe that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, the Max fans a lot of times react to the way that their team is playing, as do most fan bases. With the Maccabees struggling of late, stadium not as full as it usually has been. As the Max commit a turnover on a shot clock violation. Yeah, I think on that play there was just a lot of confusion because they came out of the timeout. Maybe they thought that they had a full 30 seconds, but in reality they had a few seconds there and they just didn't get a shot up. So it's flooding out. Oh, he was open for a second. Murphy missed him, and that's another turnover. Patesh. Samich. Patesh lines one up and gets it to fall. That's his second three. So he starts hot. Samich gets the assist. Max up 16 to 9. I mean, Yeshiva University building up their three-point percentage right now. Now they're at 22.2%. They're going to look to continue to improve that. And Tillery gets denied by Zucker. Wow. That was aggressive. Zucker did it on one end. Gives it up to Roy on the other. Zucker. 11 on the shot clock. He's going to try a triple. Looks good. Is good. So he blocks on one end. And he connects on a three on the other. Matan Zucker showing us what he's got tonight. Who said that man can't shoot threes? I guess that's not what they were scouting him for as they left him wide open, but it did go in. And he almost had a steal. He wanted it. Foul called. Again, not known as a shooter, but has shown us this year the ability when needed to hit the three. Coach Diamonds does prefer when he moves the ball around. So you'll usually see him shoot that three later in the shot clock when the options are running low. I like that shot, though. Very little hesitation from Zucker. He kind of just pulled it, hoped for the best, and it ended up falling. It's interesting. Wouldn't you think that you'd want him to shoot that shot, force someone to come out and guard him, open things up down low, especially for a guy like Zach Heim, who could blow by his defender? Yeah, Charlie, you make an interesting point. That's a jumper. Three's good. That's Brandon Perez. Batesh, catch, shoot. Bottom. He's heating up. He's really heating up. So Batesh, three of three from beyond the arc. That's a travel on Perez. He thought he hop stepped. Let's go back to Batesh for a second. Oren Batesh, last game, really not one of his better shooting performances. But he's bouncing back this game. He has the memory of a goldfish. He knows that if he just puts up his shots, he'll be able to get them to fall. Great job by Oren Batesh in this new game, in this new chapter for him. We're going to send it to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Hey, Max fans. This is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996. 
founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! For ten but take it back by, by Leifert. Give it to Terrell. Terrell! Get ready, Terrell Dumore! Twenty two twelve. Seven forty one remaining in the first half. Oren Batesh, the brightest of spots on the, of the on the Yeshiva University Maccabees team. He's three for three from downtown. Matan Zucker doing big things as well on both ends of the floor. He's got it now. And now it's Batesh. Zucker top the key. Batesh cutting inside. Ball's poked around, and Flood's got it. Quickly up. Proctor spins. Tillery inside. Big boy finish. Tillery looking like a man amongst boys in there. No one wanted to come in his way. And he finishes the two with the friendly roll. Adi, my goodness, looked like he traveled three times there. Nothing called. He gets it again. Baseline. Clears that space. Zucker now. Lays it up from underneath the hoop and gets it to fall. Yeah, battle of the bigs right now. Both men in the post just fighting for that position, and Matan got the better of Tillery. Ikovic just took a spill for no apparent reason. He's back up, though. And it's Proctor. Adi on him. Proctor gets around him. Kick out the Flood. Nice play by Proctor. Flood no good on the triple. Samet grabs, and he'll look to run the offense for the Maccabees. Batash catch, drives it in, floats. He's four for four. Yeah, rare to see Oren Batash go into that lane, but he certainly has the ability to hit those floaters. We saw a lot of that in high school from Oren. It's good to see this here also at the collegiate level. Perez now rises. That'll be a blocking foul as Zucker was in the restricted area. So nice aggressive take by number zero, Brandon Perez, and he'll, go to, he'll get two free throws from the free throw line as Max Zackheim checks back in. Schulteis will as well. Yeah, number zero, Brandon Perez, not having his best season numbers wide with just 4.6 points per game, but he's someone who's pretty electric in the open floor. He has very good court vision, and he's very skilled at finding the open man. First shot, no good. And Bardich is going to check back in as well. So far, IU unable to get so much going offensively. A lot of turnovers to begin this game. Second free throw falls. They've had nine, and when you're turning the ball over that much, you're just not going to get a ton of shots up. You're absolutely right, Charlie. Bredich of catches, absorbs the contact. Sam it open in the corner. Ball gets to him a little slow. Extra pass to Zakheim. Too strong on the, on the three. And Perez has got it for the mighty Max. Cross, cross. Ref gets in the way. No whistle. Interesting. Sam it. A three on the fast break. Doesn't go. So a Steph Curry inspired fast break by the Maccabees. They can't convert. Samet again too strong on the three. He has yet to hit one from downtown yet. He's 0 for 6. 0 for 5, pardon me, from beyond the arc. Yeah, and back to that last exchange, the ref really got involved as the sixth player for YU there. Brandon Perez visibly upset, and he had every right to be upset at that play because the Max did not play good defense on that possession. Another steal. Ikovic doesn't see it coming, now he does. Samet. Batesh, another three. Rims out.
flood quickly down the court. Goes at it with the right. Does not get it to fall. Bartichev. Samet. Falls down and gives it away to Schulstis. Flood. Ooh, athletic finished inside by number 22, Keith Farmer. Nine point game, four minutes to go. Zach Heim. Samet loses it. And he's not mentally so checked in right now, it seems like. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the decisions that the Max are playing are without a lot of purpose. The Max getting rid of the ball without really knowing where it's going to. And it has resulted in plenty of turnovers for the Max, as well as Immaculata tonight. Again, we know how it is with Zevi Samet. All it takes is one shot to fall, and it's going to start raining. We keep saying that, but we have yet to see it. Looked like a walk, maybe. Nothing called. Bardichev gets called for the foul. Going to send John Proctor to the line. And it looked like Dotan Bardichev was straight up. He had two hands. I did not see much contact on that play. He's got to be upset at that call. First shot good. And for the Max, they're a team that relies heavily on the three-point ball. And when that goes cold, they struggle finding other ways to score a lot of the times. Second shot good as well. Zach Heim. Loses his dribble. So he'll give it up to Bertichev. Salmon inside, blocked by Farmer. Schultz is the other way, foul, no good. Two shots. Well, we were criticizing Immaculata a lot in the beginning of the game, but one thing that they've really improved upon is getting to the free throw line. And they started hitting their free throws. They are now 50% at three per six. That does not sound that good, but considering they missed their first three, it's better than before. Max now with five turnovers. So both teams struggling to take care of the basketballs. The first free throw is good. No good on the second. So they stay at 50%. Roy crosses two steps. Contact, that'll be a blocking foul. So crafty dribbling by number 13, Roy Ikovic. And Schulteis gets called for his first. Haven't really seen so much of that from Roy this season. We've seen his ability from mid-range. We've seen him hit some three-point shots, but I have not seen his ability as a ball handler. Roy showing what he could do. Zach Heim. Batesh. To a cutting Bartichev. Ikovic a three. Rattles home. And that one's just got to be a killer for Immaculata. I mean, they were all over YU that entire shot clock. YU just managing to get it off at the end. Bartichev gets called for the foul. Not a smart one. Has some words with his bench. Make sure Schulteis is okay, though. Ryan Straub, number 24, inbounding the ball for the Mighty Max. Down nine. Makes Perez run a little bit for it. Pesh on him. Perez head down. Long strides inside. Layup doesn't fall. Zach Heim now. Roy. Cutting Batesh. Ball poked away by Straub. Here comes Schulteis. Tough layup falls by John Proctor. 
Looked like he may have absorbed some contact as well. Doesn't Lead down to seven. Doesn't look like that's how Proctor drew it up, but he made the adjustment midair with the athletic finish. Foul called off ball on number 22, Keith Farmer. Max Zackheim, after scoring more than 20 points last game, has yet to score this game. Something to look out for. As Samet catches off the inbounds. Zackheim now drives it in and gets the layup to fall. So just as I mentioned that he was held scoreless thus far, he promptly puts in his first two of the game. Yeah, we all know about his abilities to score. As long as he's aggressive, he's got to keep driving and slashing to that lane and eventually he'll get on the score sheet a lot more. Schultz, Perez, jumper, money. He's got a nice stroke from downtown. And that was a heck of a pass there. Terrific court vision by Schultz to find that open man in the corner. Didn't even look at him. Sam will try a three. No good again. One oh eight left to go in the first half. Max up 31-25. Kick ball called on Max Zackheim. Farmer, that'll be a charging foul drawn by Max Zakheim. He's so tough, really. He played D1 at Bryant, and you can see he's got that competitive edge that it takes to play D1 basketball, and he's bringing it to this YU Max team. Absolutely. In a D1 program, Max Zakheim really, really had to work hard and show his grit and determination in practice to try to earn some minutes. Didn't get too many. But it's really translating well at this D3 level. You can see how tough and aggressive that he is. Dow checks back into the game. Farmer checks back out. And let's see what the Max can do on this possession. Maybe thinking about a two for one. Zachheim into Samet. Blocked by Perez. Who's got it now and he'll take it the other way. Straub an open three. Off back iron. He gets it back, crosses, cross court. Thought maybe a feet shuffle, nothing called. Schulteis steps back. Couldn't tell, that was probably a pass as Dow gets fouled underneath. So a little all over the place right there. But nonetheless, they'll head to the line for two. With 20 seconds to go and the shot clock turned off. A lot going on in that possession. It was really hard to follow, but it was pretty riveting the entire way through. First shot, no good. And I'm going to refer back to something you mentioned about the origins of the name, the Mighty Max. So a little piece of history for everyone watching on the stream. On Sunday, March 9th in 1972, 11 remarkable young women and their coach from Immaculata College achieved the impossible, winning the first ever National Women's College Basketball Championship. Second shot, no good. We'll get back to that a little bit later. 10 seconds now on the game clock. Ikovic with five, twisting, turning. What's he going to do? Gives it up to Max. Zakheim, step back. Bradichev, he gets it off. <laughs> and misses by a solid amount. So it's halftime. Coming up next, we have the Leket halftime stats. But we're going to go to a commercial break first. At the end of the first half, Yeshiva University, Maccabees 31, Immaculata Mighty Max 25. When I was in ninth grade, someone told me to give up on ball. He told me, basketball will only take you so far in life. You're not going to make it to the NBA, he said. What he was missing is that making it to the NBA isn't the only reason why we play.
The game of basketball leaves you with so much more than just the game itself. The life lessons and friendships that are made while playing the game will outlive the game and can last a lifetime. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Hey, Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leket Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leket Israel, and the other winning team. Go, Max!
My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of a cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Cover to every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Hey, Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leckett Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leckett Israel, and the other winning team. Go, Max! My story started with a letter in the mail. 
I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of the cell. I made my painting from scratch, like really from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Hey, Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! Hello and welcome back into the Max Stern Athletic Center where after one half, the Shiva University Maccabees lead the Immaculata Mighty Max by a score of 31 to 25. And now we have halftime stats which are brought to you by, as always, Leket Israel. Leket Israel rescuing nutritious surplus food for Israeli in needs. Earl Baum, take it away. Charlie, we were talking a little bit before the game about the cold shooting performance from Zevi Salmon and Oren Batesh last game against St. Joseph's of Long Island. They really weren't able to put it together from three-point land. This game, however, Oren Batesh has seen significant improvement. Oren right now is three for four, shooting 75% from three-point land. So Oren Batesh really just knows that he's a shooter, knows that he has the ability to make these shots, and he continued to shoot. Zevi Samet, on the other hand, has continued his cold streak, 0 for 6 shooting, not one of his better nights. So if both of them can start to be consistent with that deep ball, I think that Yeshiva University Maccabees could blow this game wide open. Yeah, it's been good on one end, not as good on the other. But the Maccabees going to be looking to clean things up, having their shots fall, and see if they can correct their offensive woes in the second half. Again, they are winning, but it has been a little iffy. Yeah, it has. And their opponent, the Immaculata Mighty Max, have been plagued by turnovers. They have now committed 12 turnovers, and they're just being pretty careless with the ball. A credit to YU's defense. They have been very active, very tenacious. But at the same time, Immaculata could have prevented a lot of those turnovers by being more careful and being a lot more precise with a lot of their passes. Something I'd like to mention right now is the shoe drive, Souls for Souls. Uh, it's going on December 10th through 21st. Um, your drop-off location is in the Wilf Rubin Lounge or Baron 245 Lobby. So gently, well, pardon me, donate your gently worn shoes or unworn shoes if you'd like as well. But with the holiday season, a very nice way to give back. Again, the shoe drive happening from December 10th to the 21st. I think I might have a pair of Crocs deep in my closet that I am ready to donate to that shoe drive. Crocs are actually back in, so I think people would be happy to receive those. They're not back in for this guy. We're underway in the second half. Matan Zucker being urged by the crowd to shoot. He's not listening. I'd like to see him try it also. Instead, inside the sandwich, almost throws it away. Matan 
Now he shoots it from a little closer. Can't get the shot to go. Looks around in disgust. Motan seemed to be all in his own head on that play. He hit that last three in the first half, but he was not willing to take it again as the crowd urged him to. Tillery inside to Dow. He'll get fouled before the shot. By Ikovic. Roy picking up his second personal foul. Roy not a small defender, but Tillery definitely has the size advantage and it's a mismatch. So you want to see guys like Dotan or Matan guarding Tillery. Dow on the catch. Swing, swing. Schulteis a three. Short. Out of bounds over the hoop. So as it stands, Tim Schulteis is the highest leading scorer for Immaculata. He has 10.4 points per game, but he has not been able to get him to his offensive groove just yet in this contest. Sam picks up his dribble. Now it's Matan. They're urging him to shoot. Gets it back. That's a wide open three by Roy. Back iron. Schulteis the rebound off the flood. Who lost it for a moment. Gets it back. Tillery. Ooh, almost got it. Called for a travel did Flowers. Gives it inside to Tillery. Uses his body and finishes with the right. Four point game. It's Zakon. Energy low right now for the Maccabees. They got a, oh, almost a steal. They're gonna need to wake up though. Mighty Max bringing a little bit more. Samet can't get the three to fall. Zucker twisting, turning. What's he gonna do with it? He'll get called. Well, Tillery will get called for the foul. Zucker seemed like he had that layup for a moment. Decided to not take it, instead draws the foul. Matan in a spin cycle there, just turning around and around and around, making us pretty dizzy up here in the booth. Zucker now. Two guys on the max cutting, that's Berdichev and Samet. Can't tell who it went off, nonetheless, going to the mighty max. As it looks like Oren Batash ready to check back into the game. Coach Steinmetz loved what he saw from Oren in the first half. Looks to continue that impressive shooting that he displayed. It's Flood. Dow. Schulteis gets baseline, reverse life, goes. Zach Heim would like to see him attack a little more. Berdichev had the three, decided not to take it. Zucker inside with the left foul, no good on the layup. Two shots coming. Batesh looking to check into the game now. And you made a good point before, Charlie. We'd love to see Max Zachheim attacking the rim. He has a pretty big arsenal of offensive weapons. And he's really driven to the basket only once or twice this game. Sometimes he likes to penetrate and then kick it out. But Max, not showing enough aggressiveness on the scoring end. But did take a seat, but touch to check into the game. Zucker missed the first free throw. He'll get a second chance. An empty possession for the Maccabees. And the Mighty Max now have a chance to tie or even take the lead. Dow with the smaller Batesh on him. Kick out. The big Tillery for three. No good. Zucker skies for the rebound. And he'll bring it up. He doesn't see Flowers behind him. Their feet get tangled. So Flowers will get called for the foul.
Another thing that the Macs have really been lacking is those backdoor screens that they're so used to in this motion offense. We haven't seen more than one or two effective ones as Oren nearly turns the ball over. And the, the Max just look a little tired and asleep out there. Zachheim will get called for the offensive foul. Flowers drew it. Max have yet to score in the second half. As number four, Jacob Rodin looking to check in. So Rodin, the Torontonian, played his high school ball at Chat. Getting his first minutes tonight. And he's probably pretty used to the cold coming in all the way from Canada. So we'll see if he brings a little heat to this floor for the Maccabees, because those Canadians are cold-blooded. Batash, well, he gets called for the offensive foul in the first possession. The game is tied. The Max have yet to score in the second half. IU has all three buckets thus far. It seems like Immaculata has made some key halftime adjustments. And their defense has been pretty stellar. Why are you really not able to get anything going on offense? Dow, contact. No shot, the foul went on the ground. And everyone in Immaculata wanted that. Dow looks a little shaken up. He already had tape on his hand. We hope he's okay. An athletic guard for this Mighty Max team. He's been playing well today. One of the bright spots thus far. Tillery down the lane. And the Mighty Max have taken their first lead of the night. Great body control there by Tillery to shift in the air past Batesh to avoid the collision and put in the easy two. Samet, a three. He finally gets one to fall. And we all know he could. It was just a matter of time. Samet gets his first three of the game to go. And on his eighth attempt, no less. Flowers to answer. Back iron. Who wants the rebound? He does. Game's heating up. Dow. Cross court, Schulteis. Head down, drive, finishes off glass. We talked about the defensive improvement of Oren Batesh this season, but on that play, he really had nothing to do. Pretty helpless against the bigger offensive player in Schulteis. He kind of just threw his hands up, and Schulteis blew right by him. Samet has it now. Batesh cutting. Lay, no good. Roy on the follow. Back and forth we go. It's Flood. Schulteis with Batesh on him. Backs his way down, turns, floats, and finishes. There he goes again, exposing the weaker defender in Batesh. Coach Steinmetz really may have to make an adjustment and get another defender on Tim Schulteis because he could heat up really quickly if not. It's Zucker. Batesh back to Zucker. Roy driving. Gets called for the foul a little bit late. Two shots coming for Roy Ikovic. So, in the ending parts of the first half, we were talking a little bit about why Immaculata University has the name Mighty Max. So we talked a little bit about the legendary women's team in 1972 who won their first ever national women's championship against all odds and they demonstrated a dominance that is rarely seen in any sport, either women's or men's. They became true heroes of collegiate athletics and in 2014, the Mighty Max were induced, inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Quite a feat for them. And they got their name bumped up from the Immaculata Max to the Mighty Max, a huge promotion for them. Roy hits both of those. So a storied college, Immaculata. It's Tillery now. 
Flowers. Schulteis turns, and he's cooking. You start to wonder, when are they going to learn? Oren Batash just getting exposed out there by Schulteis. Doesn't look like Oren can really do anything about it. I don't know if he needs to be subbed out, but there certainly has to be some kind of switch that is made. Batash now catches in the corner. Steps back, triple, got it. So he gets beat on the defensive end, but he makes up for it with an impressive step back three. Tillery, looking for a way in. Will go back out. Flowers, two steps, lay. Tie ball game. And this game is really rose up in terms of energy as both teams starting to percolate on offense. If your friends aren't here, tell them to come ASAP because this game is heating up quickly. Batesh, another three, another bucket. That's his fifth three, he's five of six. Give him 20 points. Well, we criticize his defensive woes, but that's why you leave a guy like Oren Batesh in the game. He is fire from beyond the arc right now, hitting nearly everything. Pardon me, he's got 17. Batesh having a huge game as Zucker almost pokes it away. Almost pokes it away again, but gets called for the reach-in. And Tillery was waiting for that one to be called. Well, thus far, Tillery has done a great job getting that position in the post, but Matan Zucker knew better, and he fronted the post, getting his hand in front. Terrific hustle by Matan Zucker to make sure that Tillery did not get the ball in his hands in the first place. So Matan's got three on him. Ball thrown up in the air, Flowers like a wide receiver. Gets both feet in, and a look to perform now on offense. It's Tillery, pumps, shoulders, uses his right hand. Timeout, Tillery down a bucket, or down a point, mind you. 12.24 to go here in the game. We're gonna send it to a quick commercial break. Things are heating up, don't go anywhere. Hey Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And of course, go Max! One-point game, 12 and a half to go in the second half. And it's been a back-and-forth affair. Yeah, Immaculata University right now showing their true color, showing what they're made of. And the story so far in the second half has been points in the paint. Immaculata University having 28 points in the paint this game versus Yeshiva's 14. They're playing a lot of bully ball. Tyler Tillery getting the position that he wants and just showing that he is the bigger man in many of these situations. And Tim Schulteis as well has come alive as he gets a steal there. Dow underneath. So out of the timeout, Max give it right away. And now find themselves down one. That was a full court man press. Markovic. Ikovic. Foul will be called the number 14. Jalen Flowers. Charlie, I think it's safe to say we are watching an entirely different basketball team in Immaculata University in the second half. They look reinvigorated and re-energized. Referee just talking to Dow and to Batesh right now. As things maybe had gotten a little bit chippy. Samet. Bardichev. Now it's Markovic being harassed. Salmon on the catch. 
He's got eight on the shot clock. The Mighty Max doing a great job defensively. Three on the shot clock. Roy turns and fires and can't get the shot to go. And Schulteis grabs the rebound. He just threw some elbows and knocked down his own player. Very aggressive rebound there by Schulteis. Tillery a three, no good. Doe just wants it more. He'll get fouled. So Dow will go to the line for two. Try to make it a three point game. And this is interesting. Coach Hyman looking to make a three player change. Now this group out there for the Mighty Max has been doing pretty well. Went on a bit of a run, tie up this game and eventually take the lead. But Perez, Farmer, and Proctor all gonna check into the game. Schulteis, Tillery, and Flowers are gonna take a seat. Sam is gonna take a seat for the Max. Zachheim gonna check back in. So both coaches make some changes. Look to provide their team's respective sparks. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen more touches for Farmer. He was a guy who was a real offensive spark for Immaculata in that first half. Let's see if they can continue to get him going here in the second half. Bordichev. Markovic. Foul called. It's going to be on Proctor. I'd like to see Max Zakheim maybe start taking it in a little more. He's extremely skilled offensively. Has yet to do much. He's yet to try much for that matter. Let's see if the coach tells him to get more involved. Now it's Berdichev. And this Mighty Mac defense has been stifling, causing the air ball. It'll stay with the Max because Perez deflected it. We don't usually see Batesh airball a shot, so it makes sense that it was deflected by Perez. Now it's Roy with four in the shot clock. Zachheim, crossover, falls down, turnover. And here comes Flood. Back to Flood. Who wants it? No one really. It'll go off Berdichev. Immaculata with some quick passes there, nearly resulting in the transition bucket. Flood, a very good decision maker to give up that ball. The Maccabees having a really tough time on the offensive end as Proctor wills his way inside and finishes the easy two. And it's Zachheim. Roy. Offensive foul. Things going from bad to worse for the Maccabees. Four point game. And you're right, IU has looked like a different basketball team in the second half. As Matan Zucker gonna check back into the game. Ikovic gonna take a seat. A few Mac fans in this building trying to get a defense chant going as Perez gets stripped by Batesh. So Batesh now taking someone a little more his size, able to be effective. Zucker bullies his way down low. Shot's not going to count. I guess they didn't think he'd get, he was gathering the ball yet. Flood gets called for the foul. And as Yeshiva University is going into the lane for those drives. They're putting down their shoulders a lot. They're lucky that they didn't get called for an offensive foul there. Not sure if the defender was set, but Matan Zucker is a big boy, and absorbing contact from him is no walk in the park. Zucker's got a one and one. Doesn't get the first one to fall. So he's two of five from the free throw line today. Missing his last three. 
And another empty possession for the Max. Farmer to Tillery. Proctor. Cross court Perez. A jumper again. The same result as always. He's three of four from downtown. Having his way tonight. He's got 10 points as now it's Berdichev. Uses his length and his body inside and gets the two to fall off the window. Berdichev is very capable of scoring the ball in a variety of ways in the post. We saw a lot more uses, usage and a lot more touches for Berdichev earlier in the season. Things have kind of slowed down for him offensively since then, but it's good to see him getting a little bit more involved. Maccabee's down five. Proctor. Layup, good. That's Dow. Zakheim. Zucker. Zakheim. Crosses, crosses, drives baseline. Samet. He was out of bounds on the catch. This has not been good basketball from the Maccabees in, in the second half. Well, Schulteis checking back into the game. Dow taking a break. Well, Max Zakheim showing some pretty shifty handling there, but I think he did a, just a little bit too much. He had that shot the first time when it was kicked into the corner, decided to pass it up, kept dribble, dribbling. He probably could have taken it into that lane and had the easy layup, but instead he decided to pass it up after a series of dribbling moves. And that's Farmer using his longies to create space and get the layup to fall. Zucker now. Picks up his dribble. Salmon on the catch. Throws it to no man's land and things just look out of sync for the Maccabees. They're gonna call a timeout. IU pumped, Max looked dejected. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break. Max down nine, 7.50 to go here in the half. Hey Max fans, this is Joseph Gittler, founder and chairman of Leckett Israel, YC class of 96. It's citrus season in Israel. We need to rescue millions of pounds of these citrus fruit to feed the needy just over the next few months. So please give us a hand. Help the winning team, Leckett Israel, and the other winning team. Go Max! Seven fifty to go in the second half. Max down nine, and this second half has not been good. Yeah, it seems like Immaculata has just started to step up their game in all aspects. Defensive rebounds. We have Immaculata with twenty and Yeshiva with just fifteen, and Immaculata has also retained the ball and had great long possessions where they're using a lot of the shot clock and they're able to get high percentage looks inside. The Maccabees gonna have to start getting better quality shots. As it's Schulteis, Proctor, Floater, no good. Farmer skied for the rebound. Layup doesn't fall. It's Zucker. Coaches wanted Zucker to hit Berdichev as Samet chucks up a tough triple and it falls. So not a pretty offensive possession, but Zevi Samet bails out the Maccabees. Lead is cut to six. Zevi didn't really create an inch of space there. He kind of just chucked it up, but he has the ability to hit those shots, throw up a prayer, and it was converted. That invigorated the crowd a little bit. Defense chance arise, and Zucker obliges and gets fouled. So the Max will have the ball back. Matan Zucker, stout as usual on defense. Matan Zucker showing what he has late in this game. The Yeshiva University needs a spark right now. We usually see Zucker play some great defense in the paint, but Zucker coming out to half court there, diving on the floor, 
getting the foul call, and now he is at the line. Let's see if he can make these. It's a one and one, he connects on the first. Subscribe to Max Live on YouTube to make sure you do not miss any amazing Max games and highlights this season. Yeah! Second shot is good, so this one's coming down to the wire. So you're gonna wanna subscribe. It's a full court press, here comes the double. Batesh and Max, what's the referee gonna call? It'll be a jump ball. It'll stay with the mighty Max. And they'll make a sub as Flood's gonna check back onto the court. He's another ball handler for them. So once they saw the press coming, Coach Hyman immediately makes the change and puts Flood back on the floor. And terrific defense there by two of the smaller defensive players, Max Zakham and Orbitesh, smothering Farmer, not giving him an inch of space. Tillery catches and he'll give it up to Flood. Tesh on him, Flood gets by him. Kicks to Paris in the corner. Step back, jumper, no good. It's Zucker with the board. He'll give it up to Samet. Zucker, Zakheim. Almost gives it away, but now it's Patesh. Instructs Zucker to go inside, he obliges and finishes. So Matan Zucker's got the last four for the Maccabees. Patesh instructed him there on what to do. Proctor now, he slips, no travel called as he got rid of it before his body hit the deck. Timeout, Mighty Max. So a quick swing in the momentum, causing Coach Hyman to call a timeout. It started with that Zevi Samet three out of nowhere, and it spiraled into what's now a two point game. And we're gonna send it to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back, you're not gonna wanna miss how this game finishes. Welcome back into the Maxstone Athletic Center where things have gotten interesting. Max down two, 6.01 to go in the game. And it's been a relatively back and forth game, but the momentum right now with the Maccabees. Yeah, it seemed pretty dead about three minutes ago, but there has been a resurgence. I'd like to say that that can be attributed to Matan Zucker and his efforts, grabbing down some emphatic rebounds, some key rebounds as well, and then displaying aggressiveness and toughness on the other end finishing that layup to bring it within two points for Yeshiva. Let's see if they can try to go ahead after making a defensive stop here. It'll be Dow to inbound the ball and Flood to retrieve. Perez, let's see but the Mighty Max have drawn up here out of the timeout. It's Tillery. Help comes from behind. Tillery falling away from the hoop. Tough look off back iron. And the Max get their stop. There's Matan again. That's as good a defense as he could have played on that possession against the bigger Tillery. Great job of Matan. He's got it now. Picks up his dribble. Gets it back because the ball was poked away. They're really giving him a lot of room. Six on the shot clock, and Tillery with the steal. Matan's gonna have to put that up or else they're just gonna drop Tillery down low and clog everything up. Schulteis, Dow, Perez to reset. Perez, blow by, Dow inside. That'll be a charge though. Max Zagheim, his second drawing of the charge of the game. That'll be two on Perez. As the Maccabees once again with the opportunity to tie or take the lead. 
The Macs have to do a better job at adjusting. Sometimes their plan A just doesn't go according to plan. They have to have a plan B. They look stuck in some of those situations. And they're trying to run the offense through Matan Zucker. Maybe look to get some of their guards involved. Spardichev. He turns the corner. Now it's Batesh. It's Zakheim. Samet to take the lead. Short. Ball was not deflected. Flowers going to check back into the game. Perez takes a rest. That was not an easy look for Samet. He was on the run. He didn't really have his legs on the shot. And that's why that was a killer from Tillery. We did not know that he had that kind of range. He's showing us otherwise. Zakheim. Samet. Looking for options. There's 10 on the shot clock. Bardichev inside to Zucker. Nice play. It almost looked like it was too little, too late. But at the last moment, Bardichev found a cutting Zucker. So it's a three point game. Dow, Zach, I'm on him. Flowers gets by Batesh. Flood will reset. Now he turns the corner. Schulteis, Zucker coming to help. Foul's going to be called on Bardichev. He admits to it. That'll be a one and one. That's got to be really frustrating for the Max. They made the mighty Max use the entire shot clock, and at the last second, Schulteis slashed into that lane, and Bartichev swiped at it just a little too hard, made some contact, and now it's a foul. Schulteis going to look to make this game double digits. Not double digits. He's going to look to put him up by four, two possessions. Buttery from Schulteis. Timeout's called. Quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Four-point game. Hey, Max fans. This is Joseph Gittler, YU class of 1996, founder and chairman of Leket Israel. The skies are reopening, so come and volunteer with us in Israel as soon as you make it here. Please also consider supporting us as you think about your charity. And, of course, go Max! Four point game, 3.07 to go in the second half. It's been a scrappy one by both of these teams, each taking their own moments and, and executing their own plays. And, and it's sort of, it's been a back and forth seesaw kind of game thus far. Yeah, despite dropping that last game against St. Joseph's. Long Island. I think the Max came into this game a bit overconfident. They knew that Immaculata hasn't really gotten their flow and they've dropped five straight. They probably thought that this one is going to be a gimme. They thought this one was going to be a very easy game and Immaculata has shown a lot of fight and has just come in here and shocked the Yeshiva University Max. So at this point it's really just about who wants it more. If you want to receive Max news and updates, join our WhatsApp group chat. The link is in the description of this YouTube video. And for behind-the-scenes pictures and content you won't find anywhere else, be sure to follow at MaxLive on Instagram. Second shot of the one-on-one -on -one goes. Lead back up to five for the mighty Max. And the Maccabees looking to respond. Zucker. Batesh and Zucker wasn't looking. And this is becoming a bit of a disaster on the offensive end. Well, Charlie, listen to this. We talked about how Immaculata had way more turnovers than Yeshiva in the first half. They are now tied with 15 turnovers apiece. That is really not what you want to see if you're the Max right now. Zucker deflects the ball out of bounds. Roy Ikevich checking back into the game. Bardichev checking back out. And we usually see such great chemistry between Oren Batesh and Matan Zucker. 
who are great friends on and off the court, but there was just a lot of miscommunication there on that last possession, resulting in the turnover. Tillery, he has the biggest shot of this game thus far. Oh, wow. They're both using their bodies well. Foul's going to be called on Zucker. So Tillery will go to the line for a one and one We've seen a lot of tall players thus far this season that Matan has had to contend with, but we haven't really seen anyone with the physical strength of Tyler Tillery. When he puts his shoulder down, he's able to just move the defender out of the way. Front end of the one and one falls. Crowd wants Ipke to maybe give it a try on Tillery. That would be an interesting matchup. He'll have his moment. Don't know if it's going to be now, but he's going to have his moment eventually. Second shot, no good. Zach Heim doesn't control the rebound, but the Max got it anyways. Roy. Batesh. Back to Roy. Goes up, gets fouled. Two shots coming. Tillery can contests that he had his hand straight up, but he did turn his body as Roy went up. So it'll be two shots. And a good heads up play on the other end of the floor by Matan. He was on the floor and he was just able to pass it up without getting called for a travel, which generally happens when a player is on the floor in that compromising position. It'll be two shots now. The rest of the way for the Maccabees as Roy gets the first one to fall. 2.13 to go, five point game. As Samet skies in for the rebound, gets called for stepping out of bounds. As the effort was there for Zevi Samet and he nearly got the save. All those plays are very important down this stretch. As YU looks to deploy a full court press. Flowers, Zucker on him. Schulteis now, could he get it across? He does. Dow now, inside, layup doesn't fall. He gets his own rebound. Wait a minute, they call the jump ball and Dow is livid. And for good reason, I might add, did not seem like there was much of a tie up there. To Max Ackheim's credit, he did get to that spot or else it would have been a very easy finish there for Dow. But it only seems like he got his hand on the ball for about a few milliseconds. It doesn't seem like it was tied up at all. Shocking call by the referees there. Maccabees will take it. Here comes Zackheim. Let's see if he could attack maybe. Zucker, they're giving him the room. Inside to Sam, it doesn't land. Lays it in, timeout Maccabees. So it's a one possession game. That'll be a full timeout. So we're gonna send it to a commercial break and be right back for the last minute and 47 seconds of this game. My story started with a letter in the mail. I took my first steps in New York and felt the energy all around me. I connected with my Rebbe on the first day of Sheer. My story was learning that the mitochondria is more than just the powerhouse of a cell. I made my painting from scratch. Like, really, from scratch. My roommates came here from four different countries. We lit one menorah together. My story was practice every night. Chavruta every night. Subway rides. City lights. In my story, my name was in the headlines. The bylines. The University Museum. My story was my internship at the Supreme Court. Dancing with the Israeli flag in Times Square. My story was participating in the only hackathon, not on Shabbat. The Career Center found me my first job at a top business analytics firm. My story was becoming best friends with my Chavruta. And holding that NCAA trophy. My story started here. My story is just beginning. Welcome back into the Max Stone Athletic Center. As we are going down to the wire, Max just cut the score to 61-58, down three. Mighty Max now looking to respond to make it a two possession game once again. Schulteis into flood, he's doubled. And the foul is called, and the YU bench does not like it, and they've got to be careful. Steinmetz pleading his case 
with the referee there. He thought it was a perfect trap. It's still a one possession ball game and the crowd is letting him hear it. Not happy with the call there by the referees. Flood will get two shots as that's the Max's 10th foul. First shot off back iron. And the Max have to be hoping and praying that this second one misses to keep it within one possession and try to get for perhaps a three point look to tie up this ball game. Second shot rattles home. So the lead back up to four. And here comes Max Zakheim. Dow on him, he's done an impressive job this whole entire game. Zucker now. Sam it off the screen. Flood on him and claps. Let's see if Sam it attacks. Step back three, high arcing. No good. Rebound is fought for, that'll be a jump ball. It'll stay with IU as Dow had corralled that rebound. So a four point game. Sam it went for the incredible and came up just a bit short. And a spectacular defensive possession there for Immaculata. Staying on the ground, not falling for any shtick by Yeshiva University. And they made Yeshiva University chuck up a prayer which did not fall. Immaculata basketball. And it's getting late. The Max are gonna need a stop and a score. Twenty-nine seconds on the shot clock. That's what they were arguing about. As Flowers gets it. And IU slows it down. Roy gets called for the foul. Seems like everyone was a little bit surprised, but Roy does not argue. As Dotan is gonna check in. I believe that's five fouls on Roy Ikovich, so he'll foul out of the game. And on that last exchange, I really like that decision by Jalen Flowers, number 14, the guard, to not make the pass inside to Tillery. You had a cutting Tillery. It looked like an appealing option, but instead he made the smart heads up play and he pulled it out to make sure to not turn over the basketball. Avoiding risk is key down the stretch to maintain a lead. Dow gets the first free throw to fall. High arching free throws, no good. Schulsteis gets the rebound, that's big. Flood gets fouled by Zucker. He doesn't like it, no reason for him not to, he did foul him. And it's just these inexcusable lapses of concentration for the Maccabees, which have led to this, what's looking like awful defeat. Again, still some time left, but thus far it has not been pretty as Zucker fouls out of the game. So Natkin gonna check in. You never know what could happen here. The Max still have a fighting chance, but it's looking more and more like it's out of reach. It's gotta be pretty demoralizing for this Max team who thought that they had this game in the bag with this big lead in the first half. First shot good by Flood. And Immaculata is 11 for 21 from the free throw line right now. It's not that good, but it's just enough. Second shot, same result. Here comes Zakheim. Foul's gonna be called on Dow. Now with every possession and every foul, someone's arguing whether it be on the Max or the Mighty Max. Doesn't matter. Tensions are high. Zakheim will get two. And he needs to execute on these. Hush falls onto the crowd. First shot is good. See if the Max press on a made basket here. It's 
Zakheim hits them both. So five point game, 104 to go. Full man to man press. Took him a while to get it in. Flood has it. Schulteis easily breaks it. What's he going to do? That'll be a charge. Nacken drew it. So Nacken comes in for Zucker and immediately makes an impact. Schulteis a little indecisive there on the drive. He had a plethora of options. He could have passed it up for the layup to his teammate, but he decided to go with the unorganized Euro step. And Michael Natkin really proving himself as soon as he checks into the game. Sam at pull up three, no good. They needed that. And now they foul Flood. So Sam at drawing some ire from his teammates. Probably not the best shot they could have taken. But he's been their main scorer all year. And they went to him when they needed a bucket. Could not connect this time. So Flood will get two chances at the free throw line with 42 seconds to go. And a chance to make it a three possession game. I don't want to make a bad comparison here, but Kobe Bryant used to miss 20 shots in a row in a game, but he would hit that last shot. That would be the dagger. Kobe never stopped shooting the ball, and he got it to go eventually, and that's what Zevi Salmon is doing. We're happy that he's still shooting the ball, and eventually it, it's got to fall. Maybe not last game, maybe not this game, but eventually. Nacken gets it in. It's now a seven-point game, and the Maccabees have to hurry. Zakheim loses it. Radichev gets it. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Dow on the rebound. Max have to foul. They don't yet. Things are looking bleak. Here comes the trap. Flood breaks that trap. 20 seconds on the game clock. 17 on the shot clock. Timeout. Mighty Max. 18.8 to go. Max down 67 to 60. And this gym is starting to empty. Yeah, good timeout call there by Coach Jason Hyman recognizing that the trap was there. And John Flood, the guard, really just showing his point guard abilities. He split the defense there and he retained possession of the ball. And it looks like everybody heading for the door right now. This has got to be a low point for the Max this season. It's been tough sledding. Nothing really to say here at this point for the Max. Lost their last two games, both winnable games. Games that they probably should have won. On paper, the better team. But just miscues, missed shots, missed opportunities. The Max faithful better hope that this is a learning experience for their basketball team. They got to get back in the film room look at what they have to do differently, make those key adjustments, and improve upon them next game. Listen, it's no doubt that the talent is there. They're stacked with impressive scores and ball handlers. It's just putting it all together for a full game, not losing the concentration. And as the season and the seasons go, go on with this young team, they'll begin to develop more and more. And the product on the basketball court will be, continue to improve. Zach Heim, Natkin, he'll take the final shot of the game. It falls. So the Max will lose by six by a score of 69 to 63. We're going to take a quick break and come back with the postgame show. Don't go anywhere. Max fall tonight by a score of 69 to 63, and it was just a tough game for the Maccabees all night. Yeah, at so many points during this game, the Max looked stuck and they looked helpless. 
They didn't really have backup options. They were turning over the ball at tremendous rates, and they never got into their offensive rhythm. A really, really poor performance by the Max tonight, and they got to bounce back next game in a major way. Well, we want to thank everyone behind the scenes, our executive producer, Ari Schaff, our executive director, Ezra Jacobs, our technical director, Aaron Trarig, our associate director, Mocha Rechester, and our cameraman, David Raviv, Ben Zuckerman, Mordechai Kupferstein, and Donnie Horowitz. For Akiva Urba, I'm Charlie Bantheim. Thanking you for tuning in tonight. Once again, final score, Mighty Max 69, Yeshiva Max 63. Wishing you a good night and a happy holidays.